Hi friends, today we're going to be talking about Darkroom. It is a photo editing app for iOS and macOS devices. We're going to be looking at the iOS variety today. We're going to look through this app uh, leisurely together and talk about what it has to offer. And the reason why I, I want to talk about this app is because I actually really enjoy this app. This is my go-to app for editing photos taken on my phone. I wanted to mention a couple of things. One, here's the pricing. And here's the pricing compared to Lightroom. And I just wanted to get, give you guys um, that understanding so that you could make that comparison in your head as we're going. So here is, if I can pick up, here's the app. We're looking at the catalog view right now. I have made a curation of photos, most of which came from me and my wife's recent trip across the United States when we moved from Utah to Florida. Quick technical note, these photos were downloaded from Google Photos and they came out as JPEGs, which they were originally like, anyway, they may have lost some quality, uh, you know, not really that relevant, but just wanna let you guys know if you're looking at me at making an edit and like, whoa, where, I don't see, where's the dynamic range? This app sucks. It's the photos that suck. So this is the catalog view, if you will. You can see it's, it's pretty straightforward, pretty intuitive. Uh, we can go, we can look at recents, we can look at favorites, edited photos, exported, flagged, rejected, imported, hidden photos. Um, never, never used hidden photos. In fact, I don't use a lot of the features in here. I generally just favorite photos and edit for my favorites, but I think it's important to go through these features for you guys so that if you are, if you're, if you have a higher, heavier workload, when it comes to editing photos on your iOS devices that you know that you can flag and reject and you know, do a lot of the things that you can do in Lightroom. It's, it's, I feel like it's functional enough to do most things. One of the things I do like about Lightroom is it has a color coding system and that's generally how I organize my photos or, or you know highlight which ones I want to edit for which purposes. Uh, I don't see a color coding system in this but uh, you still have some tools available to you for organization purposes. So, you know, you can go to favorites, you can see what favorites are. This is a uh, you know, bunch of snapshots really edited, everything you've edited. So let's go to a photo. All right, this one's kind of fun. So uh, this place was really interesting because it was this little, this little newly built business area and there were these beautiful new glass buildings and then there was a mountain in the background and you know the the desert landscape around it was just a really interesting area but there were a lot of boats in the river and this was one i mean it was technically a paddleboard with a sail but you know what they deserve boat status as well so first i want to swipe to the left and you can see that you're able to flag and reject photos from from this view as well just something to take note of but let's go to crop world first Welcome to Crop World. You have all of your your expected crop features. You can rotate the image. You can hit an X to unrotate the image when you make a mistake. You can click over here and you can start to bend the image, right? And you can do the same vertically. Important things for straightening. You can rotate, of course, boom, boom. You can reset everything. Uh, reset button. Now what's interesting about this, let me see if this is true. I, I, I don't want to tell you guys incorrectly. Reset. Okay, so this reset button in the crop tool resets everything. And I find that kind of interesting because it's in the crop section and not in the, uh, you know, it's not in a, a global section like perhaps up here. Reset edit. See, that makes sense that that would be there, but to do it here is kind of kind of interest, you know, just interesting. I've never had any issues with that, but you know, you have that. Aspect ratios, I've noticed that um, you have more aspect ratio options here than in Visco. And if you go to, uh, you know, you can change your grid, all this fun stuff, we uh, rarely do anything with that. It's normally just like this. So that's basically that. You can horizontally flip the image if you would like. Uh, then we go into filters. So we have a bunch of filters here. Pretty good filters. I, I'm, I don't use the built-in filters all that much. There's only a couple that are, you know, that one's pretty nice. That one's fun. Um, they're, they're really not bad at all. I would say Visco is maybe uh, a leg above. Is that a phrase? A leg above in the filter department. 
but there's some pretty de decent stuff here. It's it's certainly not the worst thing in the world. Nice faded film situation there. Uh, that's I mean like that's pretty aggressive. Uh, of course you can f tone them back if you like, right? So that might be something you want to do. Here we are in the slider section. We have all of the things that you would tend to find in a slider section. We have brightness. We have contrast. We have clarity, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, saturation, vibrance, temperature, tint, fade, grain, vignette, sharpness. Now, one of the things I've noticed about the filters is that they almost always add sharpness, which I find to be quite irritating because I, I don't sharpen any of my photos. But I'd be curious to know, do you guys sharpen your photos a lot? Is this a common thing? Do most people want their photos to be sharpened by default? I think the photos are plenty sharp coming out of the, the camera. Anyway, if we go all the way to the bottom, we have split toning, and it's the old split toning that I don't even think you can find in Lightroom now. They replaced it, and I definitely prefer this over the, the new setup we have. Um, you know, common split toning operations that can be done, highlights and shadows, manipulatable. Split toning, a great way to add some funk to your photos. If we move into the curves section, and uh, I've always edited heavily with curves. I love curves. And so I'm, for a long time, I was having a hard time finding photo editing apps that had curves in them at all. Visco still doesn't have curves, and that makes me very sad. One of the things I pay attention to when I'm in an app and I'm looking at the curves panel is how much freedom does it give me? Lightroom on desktop gives me ultimate freedom. I can move those points wherever I, I make points and move them wherever I want. This gives me medium freedom. The dots are already created and they're attached to these vertical columns. So you can move it up and down, but not side to side, you see? Now, one of the things that I look for as well is can I pull up the shadows and can I pull down the highlights? Ah. And so you can see here, we can do that. It's fantastic. I don't find myself really needing much from these curves. They, they, they really do the job well. And of course you have the RGB as well, poke around, do whatever you want. So that's that's curves. If we move into the HSL sliders, which is another fantastic and, and very important feature for really dialing in your photos, you can see that you have, you know, you have full abilities. So what's a color that's in this frame quite prominently? Blue. So here's blue. We're moving blue around, luminance coming down, you see it getting darker and brighter. Works just like Lightroom. Saturation in and out. Um, hue, let's see, Move it, moving around quite a bit, fun stuff, not lacking anything. Excellent situation here. And then you can, you can add borders. And this is really nice. If you wanna add borders for your Instagram profile, you can do so. And you can put it in all sorts of different ratios, right? And so, you know, most people are gonna maybe put it right here-ish, right? Or if they want, you know, an inset or if they don't want any inset. But yeah, we'll put it right there. We can go uh, like that. We can go one by one, four by five, five by four, nine by 16. So if you wanna share it in a story, what have you, you can change the colors, fun stuff. Oh man, we're getting artistic now. Look at all this creativity exploding forth from our loins. Uh, two by one, because I mean, I find myself often needing two by one. Here is what I would call the history section. Pretty straightforward, but of course nice that it's there. Uh, you can copy, another thing is you can copy your edits and paste them on another photo and that's a pretty big deal and of course you can reset. There's reset buttons everywhere. So that's that, that's the editing tools. Let's go to the share tools. We can save, we can save the original one. It will replace it. Uh, you can save a copy, which is what I tend to do. You can export it to other apps. You can inset on frame, which I thought we had already done. I'm not sure what the difference is there. Maybe, uh, let's see. Okay, I don't know why that's an option, but there you go. Maybe if you want to, if you need more inset, here it is. And you can copy hashtags. Another thing that you can do with this app is make hashtag sets. So that's kind of fun. Okay, so let's click these three dots in a circle up top, shall we? Maybe an explosion will occur. Nope, no explosion, just options. Uh, you can add your photos to an album, so you can make different albums, add them, a good way to organize things. 
kind of like you would do with folders and, and Lightroom. Uh, you have a histogram, you can view the metadata, copy edits, reset edits, export. Again, you can unfavorite the photo. If you favorited it and you're like, oh my gosh, how? I don't know what to do. I, I tap the heart at the top. I, I, I don't have the ability to undo what has just happened and I'm afraid, don't worry. And then you can hide the photo for some reason. Let's click this batch button. What's this all about? Okay, so you can select a bunch of things make batch edits, fun things, I mean, fun times. Uh, you you can click add to, which is probably gonna, yeah, that's gonna allow you to put it into an album. Um, good organization tools here. Lots of fun things and settings. You can add a watermark. And I, I don't think that means that they just put their watermark. I think that means you can make your own watermark. John Appleseed. Yep, there it is. Look at that. Boom, I'm gonna watermark your photos. Fun times, that's what, that's what we want right there. Now let's do like that. We're gonna bring it all the way up and then can I put, ooh, I can pick a font. Oh baby, but, yep, that's the one. Perfect. Size, is that as, why is it not getting any bigger? From, from, <laughs> from 10 to 20, <laughs> might just be the font. We're gonna make it green, image, we can do that as well, you know, we can add a, 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 some sort of PNG if we like. Um, perfect, we'll put that on, we'll do, hit an export on this guy and we'll save a copy. So we're gonna save that and just see what we do. Let's go back here and look at that. So nobody's gonna steal your photo for sure. The only thing is it doesn't seem like I can just slap it right in the middle. Bit of a limitation. Oh, I can move it. Oh, just kidding, perfect. Yep, nobody's taking it. Perfect, okay, so I <laughs> make sure to turn that off for later. Yeah, export options, hashtag sets, show histogram, show clipping warning, show screenshots. You wanna edit a screenshot, uh, raw and JPEG options, you know, clear photo cache appearance. Um, you know, it's got a dark mode and light mode. I've been, oh yeah, I've been editing in uh, dark mode today. I'll show you light mode. I actually prefer light mode, so I'm sorry that I edited entirely in dark room today. I, uh, it looks really good in light mode. I, and one of the things I love about this app is the general uh, minimalistic feel of it. It feels very lightweight, it's very intuitive. Where you think things would be, there they are. Uh, it, it's, it's a really enjoyable app to open up and edit a photo in. Then all sorts of other things about we're building the next generation of mobile photography tools to enable full creative freedom for photographers. Sounds good to me. Okay, here we are in my iPad. You can see that we are in light mode and one of the first things we notice is that it looks a lot like the iPhone app, except there's just a lot more room. You have a sidebar that's always there now, unless I think if you wanna get rid of it, it can be gotten rid of. Nope, nope, okay. Nope, it's always there, forever. I think this looks fantastic, it's very intuitive, responsive. Uh, I did not take these photos that you see before you. <laughs> I took this with my iPad. <laughs> Let's find a photo that's not already edited. Here we go, that's very similar. Okay, we'll just do a plain shot, just for demonstration purposes. Same idea, you know, same tools, everything you have. Um, if you notice, it looks a little squeezed on the bottom here. Another thing that you can do is you can flip it on its side, which might, it might destroy my screen recording if I do this. Let's see. Oh my gosh, it broke it. It broke it. Let's just save that so we don't lose it. Okay, so now we're gonna flip it. Flip, oh, I missed my stand. Horizontal mode. Now we have all of these sliders on the right-hand side. Move them around. You have most of the sliders visible to you at once. And you can scroll down, see the split toning, move through curves. That's kind of funny that there's nothing, there's, you know, Huge empty space there, but I guess what else are you gonna put there? They could, ooh, they could maybe line up the curves like the RGB. So you have the the RGB, the R, the G, and the B on top of each other, right? That'd be a better or worse option. Got your HSL sliders, and of course, the inset to artify. And definitely, we're gonna do that two by one. I don't know what just happened there. History. So, you know, just a bit more room to play around. So now we're back on the catalog view and I wanted to show you two things. One, if you go to settings, I did want to mention this. Look at all these beautiful icons. You got one bit, metal panda. That is gorgeous, look at that. 
I think that this is probably the greatest selection of app icons I've seen in an app. So that's cool. And then also look look over here to the left. We have a raw button so you can edit raw photos in here as well. But uh yeah, that's that's the iPad. So a couple of quick thoughts about mobile darkroom versus mobile lightroom. Lightroom allows you to make more adjustments. It gives you more options. Darkroom is going to be missing some of those features, but also darkroom is, is more lightweight and, and minimal feeling in terms of user experience. It has a very pleasant UI. You know, the dark room is the dark room. It's like when, you know, old people say we're going to the Walmarts. <laughs> the dark room, in my experience, has been a quick jump in and out type of experience where Lightroom is more of an editing suite. If you want to sit down and whip through a thousand photos, Lightroom on desktop is definitely going to be for me, it's gonna work a lot better. I don't really do that on mobile anyway, so I don't need that. I just need to be able to take a photo, quickly go into an editor, edit it, and share it somewhere. So it's different use cases, different tools. Anyway, with all that said, I, I would be very curious to know what you guys use to edit your photos. Do you use Lightroom? Do you use Darkroom, Visco? What's, what are the kids using? Fa face, face, Beautiful. We got anybody still using, uh, what is that? What is it? Hipstamatic? What is that? Uh, Insta hip, Insta hip. <laughs> it's a hip replacement product, Insta hip. Seriously though, I would love to see how you guys edit your photos. And it's always good to see a plethora of options being used so that people don't feel like they're, they're, you know, wrong if they don't, they don't or can't use Lightroom. Uh, there's a lot of good options out there. I appreciate you guys. If you like what I'm up to here, please consider liking and subscribing. I would appreciate that as well. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Goodbye.